basically looking at the uh, gypsum response on um, some sodic soils. Um, this soil pit's fairly typical of the soil types around these hills areas. What we're finding as we go down the profile is the topsoil, the 0 to 10 um, centimetre layer, is a, it's, a, it's a fairly nice, uh, friable or, or well-structured loamy soil. There's a, um, uh, a hard pan um, possibly through uh, cultivation, years of cultivation on that soil type at about 15, 20 centimetres. And underneath that hard pan, um, we're finding a, a clay, a light clay layer, which is, um, is sodic or it's dis dispersive. It has fairly poor structure. The structure breaks down when it gets wet, um, which limits uh, root growth deeper into the profile. So the difficulty that we have with this dispersive clay can be very hard to work the paddock. When the soil gets wet, the structure breaks down um, and it becomes very slippery. Um, and then when it dries out, it, it, it forms a ceiling layer um, like concrete. The reason we see the, the breakdown of soil structure at that clay layer um, is basically because of the amount of um, sodium that is present, sodium and potassium that's present in the soil. The exchangeable sodium percentage um, is very high, um, it's around 17-18%. The approach that uh, Isaac's taken there is actually to apply gypsum to the site. What gypsum does is that it, it, it replaces the sodium in the soil with calcium and calcium forms a much stronger bond between the clay particles, allows better infiltration um, and better root growth down the profile. Gypsum is fairly soluble, so it will move down the profile with a decent rain, and you will see responses generally in the first year or, or couple of years. What we're doing is replacing the sodium with the calcium in the gypsum, um, that we're expecting that to be a long-term benefit. We knew we were having troubles when we couldn't get on our, our land very well in the winter time. Got on to Brett and to trials from two tonne, four tonne, five tonne, eight tonne, and then two tonne of lime and five tonne of gypsum and tried to see which one would be the best and for the longest lasting. We've been putting gypsum on for three years and we first started at five tonne and five tonne seems to be uh, just a good number and then Brett's done all the trials and five tonne or just under five tonne is what we require and we can see immediate response. In the first year we can get on our paddocks quicker the, after a rain event, the moisture is penetrating the soil profile quicker and longer lasting. We're not having as much runoff off our property. Um, so the water that is staying on our farm and in our soils and helping our crops grow. Uh, and we can see immediate benefit by being able to get out on our paddocks in the winter time and spray and spread your ear. Year one of the trial work we have done yield and there is a yield benefit with a five tonne of a lot of gypsum and a two ton of lime. We get our gypsum from uh, Lake Gillies gypsum pit. It's about 85 kilometres from where we live and it's of fair expense in just carting it. It costs um, around the $12 a tonne for the gypsum and similar for freight and by the time you put on it five tonne to the hectare with spreading costs you're looking at about 125 to $150 a hectare. Since applying the gypsum we're able to drive across the paddock and not, not need four-wheel drive as much, and we're able to get across the paddocks without putting big trenches. One thing that we have noticed over a period of time is that the water is, is a lot less runoff in the paddocks, and the water that has run off in the paddock isn't the milky, uh, cloudy colour that it was before we started applying gypsum. The dams have changed from being a milky colour to a clear, uh, water that you can actually see in the dams and see, see to the bottom. One way that the landholder can actually go out into their paddock and test to see whether their, their um, soil may be responsive to gypsum um, is to actually um, take a clot of soil and put that into um, distilled water or rainwater um, if we don't have distilled water um, and, and to wait for half an hour and to see what the effect of dropping that clot into the rainwater uh, will be. If the water around the soil particle turns milky um, then um, we're expecting that we get some response from gypsum. Applying gypsum can be an effective tool for um, addressing those soil structure issues um, and actually making the paddock more workable and getting growth uh, production benefits from that. <laughs>